Hello everyone, how are you today? I wanted to make a little video today because it's my father's birthday. Um, I haven't seen him for 27 years. He passed away um, 20, you know, around 27 years ago. And um, his, I want to tell a bit about him. I think you might find it interesting. I think there might be something that you might find valuable in this little conversation or in this little information that I have here. Some of you have known me for a while. Some of you are just new. Um, but my father's name is Josta Berling. He's Norwegian. And um, he joined the church when he was probably about 29 years old. He read the Book of Mormon. He took like three nights to read the Book of Mormon. He'd work, come home and read all night long and go to work and then read. So he read it in three days and he loved the Book of Mormon. In fact, in his house, we got this after we moved, but in his house, he had this great big picture. I don't know if you can see how big it is. Woo, see how big it is? So he had this great big picture in his house of Moroni. And let me first give you a, get you a picture. You can see how my father, my mother and my father and there. There's my mother, my father. My mother just barely had her birthday and my father's is today. And so I wanted to tell a little bit about him. My father loved the Book of Mormon and he was bold, like he would stand on the street corner in Norway and he would say, Book of Mormon, Book of Mormon and hold it up and talk to people. And I have a Norwegian sweater on today. I don't know if you can see it, kind of been commemorating him. Where's my little Norwegian flag? Hiya, Norga. Here's a picture of my dad when he was younger, sitting in the sun, you know. We Norwegians, we have to sit in the sun, you know. And so I wanted to share a little bit. So this morning, some of you are new to me, some of you aren't, but I wanted to share about maybe six months maybe a year ago, probably not quite a year ago, but I started in my, I have my own scripture meditation time in the mornings. And I usually go to a, the fitness center at, at a nine o'clock swim class on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or a 10 o'clock one on Monday, Wednesday. That gives me time in the mornings to ground myself and to research and to listen. It's It's been a thing of mine my whole life. And in one of the, another movie, another video that I make, I'll share some of um, 29 years ago and listening and what I wrote down and how incredible it is. So it's been a journey of mine my whole life, but it's also been in our genes. And so this morning when I got up, <clears throat> oh, a few days ago, I posted how I heard Christine turn to, I don't remember what one it was in some place in the New Testament and it talked about um relying not relying on the arm of flesh but on God. It was a really good one. And so I do that often. I don't always have super good um scriptures that come up when I say um what when I try when I tune in and say what would you have me learn today? And I listen and sometimes I'll hear Moroni six thirty nine and I open it up and it's like incredible and other times it's just it doesn't make any sense or it's not anything so i don't want you to get this idea that it's always that way because we're still sometimes if you're more worried or more you're not quite into you're not going to get as much as if um you're more quiet and responsive and listening but today this is a book that was he had a book done, I think that, actually, I think it was done by the church. Um, anyway, it was, um, a person interviewed him. It's the life and ministry of Gusta Burling. And he was a church historian and he asked questions. And it was put in this book about my dad. And um, later on in, in his life, he went on a mission and he met my mom and, and, then later on, they went on a mission and um, with us, with Karen and I, I was 14 to 17. We went to Norway. Anyway, a little bit about us. 
Um, but anyway, I learned something new. So today I got my book and instead of doing this with the scriptures, I said, so daddy, I like to call him daddy. I never call him father. That's too strict for me. It's too, I don't like the word, but I like the word daddy. And some of you may have known, I think I have made three videos on it about in December 2015, how a healing, an intervention was made by Christ and my father for me, for me to come closer to my heavenly father. And that was, I have shared that a number of times and I'm not going to hear, but it was quite an experience to step in to the other side and to know, to experience that there's no time there. The idea of time, uh, it just doesn't exist there. It's not like here on earth. And we've heard that before, haven't you, from other people and other sources. Um, anyway, so today when I got this book, I thought, okay, so where at? And I heard, go to page 24. And so I started reading on page 24 and I learned something I didn't know before. So I am the firstborn, I have one sister, and I was named after my grandma, who I, I've never met either of my grandparents. They had, they were alive, but they weren't around me when I was born or they passed shortly thereafter. But anyway, um, um, I was named after my grandma and she had a name and it was Grandma Burling and she had a name, Christina. Um, I think her name was a long name. Oh, I can't remember it all right now. But she has Christina Maria Johansson Mateusen Barling. Long name, huh? <laughs> anyway, so I was named after her and I found out here in this book here that Christina, my grandma, she had the ability to see spirits. I did not know that. And then um, my, um, and then also my dad's sister, she also had the ability to see spirits too. And then I have, um, I have, I haven't been able to see spirits, but I've been able to sense them. And here from the other side, I'm pretty good with that. And um, anyway, so I wanted to share it. So I thought that was pretty interesting to learn. And then I learned something else here in this book. And I learned that my dad had a question about something. Someone was trying to uh, anyway, someone was trying to get him to join that particular religion. And so he had a question about something and he wanted to know. And so he got a Bible that he had and he kind of closed his eyes and he said, you can give me this answer, God. He closed his eyes and he had a red pencil with him. And then he, then the book opened up and it opened right up and he, and he already had his before he opened his eyes, he had his um, pencil on a scripture and he looked down and it was exactly the answer that he needed. Isn't that interesting? So the Lord can work in a lot of different ways to answer our prayers and to help us learn to listen to him, to tune in to him. And we may have different answers uh, depending on what our particular uh, role is in these last days. And right now, my role is a freedom fighter, and it could change at some point, but I'm really working at doing what I can to help with freedom in our country. Anyway, so this was something special that I learned that my dad also, that he did the same thing that I did, and I didn't know that, and, and I wouldn't have known that. And then I wanted to share an uplifting story, so, um, when he was over on his mission, um, he was there for three years and they, the Norwegian government wouldn't believe that he wasn't paid money. So they made him pay back what he would have earned, what they just figured out some amount of money. So he had to pay back taxes for three years. Isn't that interesting? So it's strange, but he had to pay back taxes for three years um, for being a missionary. And he met my mom on, on, they met each other on their missions and he wanted, 
he had promised my mom to be there by Christmas. It was a few years after she'd gone home. And he had to pay taxes and then he had to pay back pay for <laughs> this the Norwegian government. And he was missing the money that he, that he needed to fly over. And he just said a prayer and he said, God, I really need, I need help. I need you to help me so that I can get over there to Fern for Christmas. So he would have to take an airplane instead of a boat because it was so, um, there wasn't time to get on a boat and be there for Christmas. And he prayed about it. And then he said, you know, and he used to sell pictures, but then he would, pictures, but he would go to people's houses and then he would talk to them about the church and the Book of Mormon. And so uh, that kind of cut into the pictures he was earning, <laughs> the money he was earning, right? And so um, he said, so he just said, I need help. And the next morning, his sister came bright and early to his house. He said, Gusta, Gusta, I haven't been able to sleep all night. And she saw that he was up early because he liked to get up early and read and, and ponder in the morning. And she said, do you need money? And he said, I do. I need to have some more money to get to America. And she said, well, I have money. She had been, and she he had no idea that she had any money, but she'd been saving up some money and on the side. And so he borrowed the money that he needed to get here to the States and then he paid her back later. So that's a, a neat answer to prayers, right? So when my dad was younger, he had the ability to, um, he lived in an apartment upstairs with his family. And as people walked up the stairs, he could tell by the way they moved their feet who it was going to be. So he could tell by listening who was going to be coming in the door. Well, there was a time in his life when he was ill. Um, he didn't know it at the time, but he had, um, he had rheumatic fever as a boy. So when he got older, he had heart problems and he wasn't getting enough oxygen. So he was ill sometimes. And one of the times he was in bed and he said, and my mom, I'm sure it really scared my mom. If you can imagine a young mom, and two girls and then her husband talking about hearing people on the other side and they were wanting him to come and join them and their services and then my dad said he heard footsteps and they were the saviors and the and the savior said it's not his time now he has more things to do you know and after that he got better he got an open heart surgery um um Russell M. Nelson performed the open heart surgery on him. And then um, after he got better, he went on a mission. He was served as mission president in Norway. So I think that's pretty interesting to know that um, that, that happened, that people can hear. And so what I wanted to end with is one of the things I wanted to say too is my father, he became a citizen of the United States, but I remember he loved our country. And he would have patriotic books around. I remember seeing the Naked Communist, probably probably some more Cleon Skazen books, books about the Constitution around. In fact, I remember as a young girl going to the cultural hall in a church and hearing about the Constitution. And I remember being there and hearing about the Constitution in a cultural hall. That should be happening now. It's really interesting. The Constitution doesn't have anything to do with either party. It's the structure for the foundation of the United States of America. And what? how far have we come that we can't use? I'm not talking about going to using a church building for a particular party. I'm talking about just having it for um, to study the Constitution. No, but we can sure go there and get a vax. <laughs> I mean, really, really, it's it's an interesting time that we live in. I know some people think that they're really good, but uh, anyway, it's coming out that they're not. And more and more, they're going to be there's going to be a lot of lawsuits coming down the road. It's just coming out now. 
but I didn't want to get on that too much. But what I wanted to say is I learned from him how much we loved, he loved our country and he loved the Book of Mormon. And, and so I'm grateful for his life and for the heritage that was left me. And so then I have two children who had that ability to tune in. Our youngest is particularly working in that, Jenny. She helps people all the time with, um, there's all kinds of tragic deaths that happen and she helps people find peace. And sometimes their loved ones have a message. They actually do. And they are a part of our lives. So if you've lost your, your father, your mother, someone has passed, um, you should know that they're not far away, that they are a part of your life. And don't believe the lie that they are doing all, all these grand things and that you're not important. That's not what I learned at all. They always have time for you because really on the other side, there's no time. There's just love. The time doesn't exist like it does now. Oh, I experienced that so clearly. So I wanted to share and let my dad know on his birthday how much I love him and that, and that he cared enough and that he, he, he and the savior did an intervention for me to help me because that's what I needed. I was asked to give a talk, come unto Christ, and I wanted it to mean something. That's 2015. And I learned so much. And I learned that you have a heavenly team. There's people on the other side of part of your life and they love you. And they understand and they're not judgmental. You know, that's part something that's part of being on this earth. But I wanted to let my dad know I love him. And I know that he is excited for our journey, that he's helping us and our his children and grandchildren. And he's a part of um, the Norwegian culture and people who love God because he did with all his heart. And I'm grateful, Daddy, for your love. Tusen tak. Grazie lere medagen. Goodbye, Dad. Talk to you later.